Hey there guys and welcome back to the Open Mid League Cast episode 3. We're here to talk about the second week of the NALCS and NA Academy. And then uh, before that we're going to talk about the patch and our thoughts on the game right now. So let's dive in, into this uh, very small patch. Uh, I'll let you go first in terms of what you want to talk about, Jeffrey. So obviously patch 10.3 just dropped today as it's recording, February 5th. Mm -hmm. uh, some the biggest change on the patch has to be a little champion called Akali, <laughs> and if you didn't know, uh, Akali was at a 40, 45 percent win rate before the patch. Uh, not super high, right? But she was broken because she's really hard to play. Mm -hmm. uh, her current win rate is uh, thirty. You said thirty. <laughs> it's fucking. It's fucking thirty. You said it dropped what? What is that, 13%? 15, 15%. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> it dropped, and I think it might be a little bit more. So her win rate has dropped 15% in one patch. Uh, they have really hard gutted the collie. Like, she's so bad. Um, I took some time today to, to look at some gameplay of her. I saw Perks playing it, and boy, was he flaming the fuck out of a collie. <laughs> she's, she's so bad. Uh, she's really, yeah, so... Unfortunately, uh, she's. I mean, I, I think maybe in good hands, she's still like doable. But so, like in pro play, she might still be like kind of playable. But in solo queue, she is dog. Yeah, I that, would imagine like, just really bad. Uh, it just, just looks imagine. like the uh, they kind of went a little too hard on the champion. But at the same time, this is just a champion that's just kind of hard to balance. Where it's like, all right, I'm gonna be broken if you're like good at the champion, but like. Outside of that, it's kind of hard to, like, make it balanced for everything and everyone, you know? Yeah. It might be a little fair, because she's been in the meta since 2018, summer. Ever since she got reworked, pretty much. <laughs> so, yeah, so she, she's she been meta for, you know, about two years now, maybe a little less, year and a half. So, I I guess it's fair, because some champions, they, you know, they're, they, haven't, they haven't been in the meta for, like, five years or, or whatever, so... Mm -hmm. I guess it's it's kind of fair, but they really hit her with the bat. Like she's kneecapped. Like she was in the hospital. She can't move. Mm -hmm. Nurse Akali. Uh, nurse, yeah, Nurse Akali, just in peace. <laughs> um, other things on the patch would be Azir. Got a small buff. Personally, I haven't tried it yet. It's not that big, but it should be enough to maybe boost him like one percent or something. Uh, maybe he'll get picked in pro play. And aside from that, uh, I think most things on the patch are. Pretty small, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go a little LS here. Most of these changes don't matter. <laughs> too yeah, much. a lot of them don't really do much. I think the Senna one might be a little big. Yeah, the set the Senna one for ADC Senna is kind of big, right? Mm -hmm. But aside from that, like, not much. I mean, set is sets. Set's still good. <laughs> set's still good. It's a it's a small nerf to the cooldown and the damage. But he, he's still going to be fine, I think. Um, yeah, he is. I played a couple games with him and against him. He still seems like, he still seems good. Yeah, I mean, he'll still have the same problems. It's I think it's good that they tuned down the numbers a little bit because they were a little too high. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, the the big old thing for Seb would be <clears throat> getting on top of people. And, you know, that that's like the hard, that's like the counterplay, right? So, mm -hmm. They didn't really nerf his ult, they just nerfed his W damage, which is, I think, fine. The base damage wasn't really the problem, which is what they touched, but it's mostly the the percentage damage once you have, like, 100 grit, right? Yeah. So, don't think it's really going to matter. Uh, some other changes. <laughs> Did you see Yumi? Oh, yes, I am going to talk about Yumi. So, okay. the thing about Yumi is that uh, since they've, like, reworked her, kind of, where, like, if you get hit by a CC when you're out of W, it goes on a cooldown for five seconds. Like, I think that's, like, the biggest change. But I think it was needed to make her balanced. So now the, the champion is just, like, in a weird spot where it's, like, do we take double, like, no flash summoner? Where it's, like, do I take heal eggs or heal ignite or whatever the combo you want to do that game? Or do I take flash? So now... Uh, they did some number buffs uh, to her. So now W, you won't get uh, immobilized uh, for the W on a silence, which I guess made like Soraka in lane really dumb uh, against Yumi or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Then they buffed uh, or not. 
Uh, they changed uh, zoomies a little where if you have the AP ratio went up by 0.1, but they decreased the base uh, at, at later ranks, but it's still the same early on pretty much. Uh, mm-hmm. And then the Q, uh, they buffed it by making it 90 at all ranks instead of like uh, increasing per rank. But like these changes aren't really the doing. Mana cost. Yeah, pretty much the mana cost. Uh, I don't know. The champion Yumi is just so weird um, at this point. Uh, personally, I played against it once, but then again, that's just solo queue. Uh, and it just seems like the champion still has the same problems where it, if you get hit by one CC, you're kind of just dead. And then if the AD dies or whoever dies when she's on them, it's like a free kill still. So I don't know. You know, the champion was like super duper broken when it came out. And now it's just like kind of bad. Kind of kind of dead. As, yeah. as a lot of champions get gutted mm-hmm. kind of like after they've been like too OP. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> much how it's been for <laughs> <Yumi>. a while. <laughs> Silas. Uh, rest in peace, those champs. Silas making a comeback though. But I don't yeah. think he's super good. I don't think um, so either. The uh, Leona like nerfs, quote unquote. They don't do much for her, quote, honestly. Quote. Yeah, because like the main problem is that like when you put, uh, so what's it called? The Q cooldown. It doesn't like go down when you put points into it. So like you just max W then E. But they're just nerfing the damage, which like the damage isn't like what made her really dumb. It's the fact that. She's just dumb tanky and has, like, really good and, like, reliable engage. Uh, obviously, this will hurt, like, solo queue and stuff like that. But, like, it's not going to it's not gonna make her, like, really bad now all of a sudden. Well, I, mean, I at least hopefully now we're not going to see freaking mid laners getting 1v1 by Leona. Like, Possibly like can six. still happen. <laughs> Possibly still can happen. Like, the numbers aren't that bad, but still, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. Um, some other small nerfs and buffs to champions. Not really much. Like, mm-hmm. talk about the Misfortune nerf doesn't really do anything. It is... It, it does make it so she does need to build attack speed um, a little bit more. So instead of, like, just going only one attack speed item, you, you probably you might want to get two. Mm-hmm. It definitely affects her later more, like, her, yeah. her late game a lot more. But, but she's she does still... have attack speed steroids, so... Yeah. She's still gonna hit like a truck. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll tell you about something I saw today in the LCK that involves misfortune. <laughs> um, <laughs> continuing the jungle changes, <clears throat> small buffs um, to XP for levels four to six. Um, basically, they're just buffing the fact that you know right now junglers will hit level three really fast, like three minutes into the game. Mm -hmm. Um, faster than laners but the problem was that the jungler would hit level four and then the mid laners the solo laners would hit level six at the time that junglers are like four and a half so at that point it's like you you walk into mid lane for that gank you're level four they're level six and you get popped uh (laughs) you're gone yeah um which is exactly what happened in one of the academy games uh to, rest uh, in peace, Fragus. This week, yeah, rest <laughs> in peace, Fragus. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuck, ridiculous, ridiculous. Um, but yeah, they're buffing the numbers. <laughs> Hopefully, now as a jungler, you'll be actually able to farm to level six. Um, from what solo queue I saw today, junglers were still hitting level. Were like occasionally even level. It's better now, but you're still gonna hit six later than your solo laners. So. Just be careful, obviously, when you're going in for a gank. Like, honestly, mid laners could still be level eight, and you could be level six if you're behind. So, mm-hmm. not not the best. But I, you know, maybe the buffs are enough for junglers to be relevant for like a little bit longer. It's probably still not enough for later in the game, right? So. Yeah, I think uh, unless they're like super power farming, uh, the uh, junglers are still going to be even level. Or just, like, one or two levels ahead of, like, the support or something like that. Like, it's still, like, not that big. Um, but it does help them early on, definitely. I will say that. Yeah. So, oh, there was a bug fix on Lucian. So now he's not going to double crit on his passive, unfortunately. 
<clears throat> I have a 75% win rate on Lucian right mm-hmm. now. And now uh, Brahms passive actually. Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah, now it properly reduces by tenacity because before it wasn't. So that was right. Yeah, so now <laughs> now we can't abuse Brahm Lucian anymore like we Rest did the other peace, day. Rest in peace, man. Rest in peace. Well, actually, we could still do it because we're better than people, <laughs> but still. <laughs> um, yeah. <clears throat> so that was the patch. I think nothing much really stood out to me on it. Uh, I mean, the Sejuani buff, but that's just like a meme. Yeah, and, <laughs> pro players sweating. Yeah, and the echo nerf to jungle at least, like Jesus Christ, I, I just, I want to stop seeing this champion. Yeah, in the jungle. I just want to stop. I, I just want to stop seeing him. Period. Yeah, echo is definitely a uh, very interesting champion because he's like super annoying when he's ahead, but like when he's even or behind, he's kind of like eh, whatever sort of. Thing. Yeah, when he's behind, I think he's super eh. When he's even and he like lands like a nasty stun, like I just, yeah. Just, 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 the stun is hard to hit for a reason because, like, when you hit it, you really just, like, kind of shit on people. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, oh, and the one last thing is Aphelios got touched by <laughs> a lollipop. They basically handed him a lollipop, like, all right, now you're just not infinite range. Now your range is 1,800, which is still <laughs> further than what Caitlyn Trap is. So I don't see what the point is, right? Like, you're still further than freaking Caitlyn. Uh, it's just so, I guess, when, like, you, like, recall, and, like, someone, like, steps on a, uh, trap, yeah. or, like, his turn, he can't kill them, I guess, but... Yeah, you know what, think, thinking about that, that is one of the dumbest things I've heard what? in a while. That, no, just imagine you go to base, you left the turret, someone walks into it, and then you one-shot someone from base. Yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's a little sus, you know, right? That Games, seems like a gameplay balance, re- obviously, in the works here. <laughs> yeah, I, I would wonder that someone doesn't mention that. That's kind of <laughs> that's kind of not fair. Yeah, <laughs> not fun. Right? I mean, like, so. I played a game with Aphilios just recently, and like, and champion still needs to get banned because late game, like, that champion just does too much damage. And like, when you have like the proper tools in your team to like help him out and like give him room to fight it's just still dumb you know like this is like yeah. a nerf obviously like on paper but like he's still the same champion that he was before so yeah the infinite range wasn't what was making him like busted so but people talking about Philios is that he doesn't provide utility he provides like only damage yeah he only and, provides raw damage pretty much and, and but the thing in in competitive is that you know He's not mobile, so he needs to be played around. In competitive, obviously, that is a lot easier than in solo queue. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost impossible in solo queue. So in solo queue, like Aphelios can get like ran down, right? Like you, can, if you focus him correctly, like he he gets pretty useless because he'll just die over and over if there's no one protecting him. Yeah, especially um, if you like time is flashing. Like, all right, guys, jump on him now. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, and it's the same thing for other ADKs who are mo- a mobile, right? Like it's mm-hmm. the same issue. Right now, his damage numbers are just higher than other ADCs, which is why he's getting played. Um, he doesn't really bring any utility except for freaking ulti Gravitum, which I was what we were watch. I was watching him today in LCK. Uh, well, I, let's just freaking talk about LCK quickly. Um, so Aphelios was pick banned in LCK today. Um, first pick status: Senna surprisingly not picked at all, even though she wasn't banned or picked. So, LCK has no prio on her. And Aphelios was just wrecking face. Like, Teddy played her, and he legit 1v5 carried uh, SKT into a victory over... <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, Dam1. Dam1, yeah. <laughs> so, that was incredible watching Teddy play Aphelios. Uh, he really good. Was legit pumping out damage, landing like three or four man Gravitum ults, rooting everybody. Aphelios still looks really good. It, higher priority in in Korea than than in other places. Yeah, I think it's literally because like they were able to identify like yeah, this shame is actually like broken, which is like what well, when we get to LCS we'll talk about that. But like when teams like Prio Senna over Aphelios is just really weird to me. Obviously, the global alt is like a big thing for like top side fights and stuff like that. But like when you have a champion like Aphelios who could just pump out so much damage so quickly. And, like, he has this factor of just, like, he has, like, so many, like, different, like, weapon combinations that, like, not, like, no one really knows, like, 100% everything that he does, I would say. Even, like, the pros. 
So like Give he just has play, yeah. he he just like has like this weird X factor of just like hey I I'm I'm a immobile ADC but I do like a shit ton of damage. I have CC and like these turrets and like these other things and yeah like you know Senna's good for like the utility and stuff but like it's just not comparable in damage when you have a Aphelios just wrecking face. Yeah, and and that's like the conversation around you know what double F center in, in on stage was that like he's not gonna play Senna because Senna's like, you know, considered dog to him because it doesn't it's not a carry champion. It's like mm-hmm. more like and and this is why in EU it's like prioritized is because in EU they play the one through one style like for it like pretty well, right? Mm-hmm. So when you play one through one with Senna, your 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 solo lanes cannot lose because you will get the Senna ulti and you will win the one v one, right? Yep. So one reason why Senna's like higher priority in Europe versus how in Korea, where a lot of the team comps in Korea that got played uh, this past night were five v five brawling, like just kind of like just run at just run at you, just fight. Right, so there's yeah. not as much side laning going on. So, Aphelios was why, like he, you just want damage, right? Mm-hmm. And also why MF was getting picked instead of Senna. MF the next best ADC to Aphelios. Um, yeah, because just MF has raw damage and has that team fighting power that Senna doesn't have, pretty much. Yeah, and Misfortune. Uh, <laughs> Teddy was playing Misfortune, and um, the enemy Aphelios was, you know running up on him he was like yo i'm ready to fight you it's like in mid lane it's like you know 15 minutes in he's Aphilius is like oh i caught him out i caught him out i can get him Aphilius runs up on misfortune and then teddy proceeds to three shot him like three autos he he got three crits in a row and and killed him like <laughs> it killed him in mid lane it's just like oh misfortune does damage <laughs> yeah. so I, that's why I think the attack speed nerf it doesn't really do anything because her damage is still ridiculously insane yeah she and, just presses her buttons auto attacks and she just still does a lot of damage just yeah. because of like how people build her is like crit oriented which is like the better build compared to like what it was before like lethality black cleaver yeah. lethality yeah junk it's like, trash yeah pretty much all of those like weird bad items but now when you just build crate you just uh you know hit your buttons and auto attack <laughs> yeah basically and and that uh, also she had a higher priority in academy this week too so interesting to see how the meta has shifted kind of away from senna and i think with this nerf like this is definitely like a this is really gonna hurt senna because now she'll get slow uh stacked so much slower um mm-hmm. so she probably won't be honestly i think the center priority is gonna drop like worldwide with this yeah, nerf. most likely, cause like, uh, uh, what's it called? Like, now the the uh, stacks just drop like so much less now. Uh, it, it's just like ridiculously like low now. It's just like not even worth it to like even pick the champion, cause the reason why you would pick it is because like when the souls would drop and you're still farming, like you would get like a pretty decent amount of range at a certain point of the game now that it's dropped so much it's probably not even going to be at that same point at that same exact time you know yeah so um as far as the first korean set that happened uh it was t1 winning over damon 2-1 uh faker tried playing rumble mid that did not go well (laughs) uh he really ran it down 04 teddy was trying to hard carry effort really ran it down 2-9. 2-9. Uh, so, Effort didn't look great in the first game. He looked okay in the second game, and then in the last game, he was running it down on Buttscrank. Uh, landed only, like, two hooks that even mattered, and, you know, the game only ended after T1 got Elder and Baron. Like, the meta in, in Korea is really slow. Like, the games were really slow. All of them uh, went yeah. <laughs> 40 minutes plus. Um, and Korea was already slow anyway, but for 40 minute plus to be your average is kind of crazy. Like, uh, I would just imagine it's because of how dragons work now. Because, like, they're like, oh, okay, if we could just, like, get the soul and elder, like, that's just a guaranteed win. So we'll just play for that, I guess, is what they're trying to do. Uh, but, you know, you just have to get there. So they're all just waiting around. For like yeah, certain it, plays, certain fights. In the in the SKT series, there every single time 
the team didn't get a soul until the sixth Drake. So the enemy team always got two Drakes at least, right? So that mm-hmm. kind of stalls out the game um, really hard. I guess like when you get all the Drakes, <clears throat> it makes it really easy. Um, but obviously that didn't happen in Korea. They really traded Drakes a lot in the series, cause, at least in the first series because it was close. Second series wasn't as close. Um, they were kind of it was kind of stompy either way. But at least for Damwon and T1, their series was really slow and like team fights were super long. Do you remember in season six when team fights would last legit like two minutes? Uh, yeah, wasn't that like Maokai meta and shit? Yeah, like it was like Maokai, <laughs> Sion, that kind of stuff, right? And it <laughs> it was kind of like that because there was one team fight that lasted like so long. And there was, it was so long that like there was two Ornalties, three Gagasolties, two Narults. Like, <laughs> I think I saw two Affiliasolts. So, <laughs> hey man, they're just trying to get these fights. <laughs> yeah, and then obviously the other series was legit so fast, thirty minutes. Um, stompy either way. <clears throat> Genji ended up winning. Uh, some, and like I said, I mean one person played. Ruler played Callista actually. Uh, That's crazy. <laughs> and there was Bard played. There were some interesting picks in this series. Bard, Callista, Tarek, Yumi, and Ezreal were all played in the bot lane. So <laughs> that was pretty weird, I gotta say. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so, like, these are just champions that we just don't see, like, ever, especially within. The way the game is being played right now, where, uh, you know, for, like, EU and NA, it's, like, you know, Filio Sena, Filio Sena, while, like, Korea is just, like, trying out everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're just, they're just like, thinking other stuff is good. Obviously, I'm glad that Ezreal Yumi didn't win, because I didn't want to see that shit in the meta. Um, thank God Bard won. <laughs> yeah, I mean, any champion other... Any champion that you pick into Yumi is probably going to win, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're trolling. Like, something so, something has to go wrong, like, disasters, like, really, really, really bad in the, the laning phase for you to lose against Yumi. Yeah, that... Because that champion actually yeah, has, so. like, zero prio in, like, anything. <laughs> yeah, she's really bad right now. So, moving on from Korea, uh, just small note because today was the first day of Korea. Um... We're going to move into Academy, obviously. Academy mm-hmm. Rush looked a lot better this week. I enjoyed it more. Yeah, I definitely liked watching Academy Rush. Uh, just because, like, they actually were going... Because, like, at one point within the broadcast, they were going to switch off of, I believe it was uh, GGS IMT with the uh, Gorica on Soraka. Uh, they were going to switch off of that to another game, but they noticed that I believe Gate was going for a play on Rakan. So like they were, so like they're actually like you know proactively like watching the games and making sure that like if big shit's gonna happen, they're gonna like you know like make sure that they yeah. see it. So uh, that was like a nice little thing because I I noticed that Dash was like trying to transition to a different game, but like you know they noticed then the fight like, happened. Yeah, yeah so they were like, oh that shit, that was nice. I so. saw that too. I noticed that too when I was watching it um, live. And so the Academy Rush games that happened were COG, 100 Thieves, Client 9, FlyQuest, Dig, TL, IMT, GGA, and then the last game was EG versus TSM, which was fully streamed. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, if you wanted to watch these games on the Academy Rush stream live, I believe you could watch them on like uh, whichever like team like posted on their social media. It'd be on like their YouTube or like their Twitch or whatever they wanted to do it on. Uh, so yeah, that was like a also nice little improvement they did for uh, Academy Rush. Yeah, and and the full you can still find the full vods on <clears throat> LOL event vods. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a great YouTube channel. I love going and watching, but it's pretty easy to just find vods, right? So yeah, it's, it's not that hard. Yeah, so let's talk about the first team and the best team to talk about in Academy Dignitas. <laughs> so don't you just love Dignitas? <laughs> so. Despite Dig being like a uh, a you know roster of like all of these players, uh, you got Lorlo, Cadian, Demonte, Phoenix, and Ole. Um, they are the best team in the academy right now. They are 4-0. but you know I don't think that they're like 
an LCS team, as people would say, just because like they're playing in these academy games and they're still making like a lot of dumb and like silly mistakes. Obviously, they're probably just like having fun and like not like thinking, you know, fully about the game because it is academy, so it's not leading up to anything. There's not like huge stakes other than like winning the whole split or whatever. Uh, but you know, there's like a lot of like small mistakes that I noticed that they would make along with like EG and TSM. Uh, so I wouldn't say that they're like LCS ready, but they definitely could be if they like tightened up their gameplay a little bit, but they are still like really, really good. Well, I, actually I think their drafts are like pretty disrespectful, honestly, like, um, and that's why it, it's, that's why I feel like to me, like it's almost like they're not even taking it serious because, <laughs> <laughs> Because in their first game, they uh, they draft um, Ola. They first pick Set, so on blue side. So, so obviously they think Set is good enough to first pick. Um, even though in EU we saw how uh, people first picking Set were like legit getting counter, like hard counterpicked across the map, just because teams were drafting like a little, you know, kind smarter. of disengage. <laughs> yeah, they're just drafting smarter, and like Set just sometimes did nothing. Um, but obviously in this game, they first pick set and then they BM by picking Olaf like in, in the last round. So they're, they're saving jungle for like last round and they pick Olaf. And basically when you pick Olaf, you're saying like, all right, I'm going to beat you before 30 minutes or I'm going to lose. Cause I'll get outscaled. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and they also picked rumbles, which is the same thing. Like it's really strong in the mid games, really strong early game, but we'll lose later. Um, but dig had a 4k gold lead at 22 minutes um they got the eight minute eight minute herald so they were like they swapped perfectly they got the herald and then there's this insane play by lorlo on set where he like goes in hits like a four-man set ulti because he just like runs up and ults someone and then akkadian just runs up and gets a fucking quadra kill on olaf and (laughs) <laughs> they get the bit like they got they got four drakes to zero they got ocean soul at four mi- at 24 minutes and they won three minutes later kill score 19 to four like it it, it wasn't close versus tla and and maybe because tla is just really bad because they're actually oh four right now yeah um, i think tla is just not good but yeah jenkins is, yikes <laughs> not to is definitely um uh you know showing what they can do on stage and stuff like that so yeah, and, and it's not just this one draft, because their next draft, which is something that some people have complained about drafting-wise, is where they pick... This game, Dig picked no en- versus FlyQuest. Yeah, they, they picked, picked, like, no reliable engage. They picked no engage. They picked Aatrox, Lisa, and LeBlanc, Senna Thrash. So your your only way to get, like, engage a fight is, like, finding a pick with, like, Senna, LeBlanc, and Lee Sin. Mm-hmm. And, or like Lee Sin going in and killing himself for the engage. Yeah, or, or killing something. himself for the engage, right? But like even then, there's like no CC to keep people in. There's only mm-hmm. Thrush. There's not like Leona or Nautilus or something like this. Um, but FlyQuest draft this game was... They had a lot of engage. <laughs> yeah, but they were they were bad. Like they, they, <laughs> they drafted... Their, like I think their draft was the main reason they lost the game because they, they were keeping it close, right? Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> watching the draft on they last pick um they last pick Rexai, I think. Uh on four or five. So like the last two picks they get, they so they Dig hasn't showed their jungle yet, right? So Dig showed everything except for jungle because they're red side and they have everything except jungle. And mm-hmm. FlyQuest is like, you know what'd be great here? Let's draft fucking Rexai. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Rexai, Rexai basically did nothing the whole game. Just proceeded to like just die so fast in fights. Jarvan was open. They drafted, they drafted um, Blitzcrank and Lissandra, and like Lissandra wouldn't have been that bad. But the mm-hmm. fact that they like, t- it's like they didn't even like they had Orn Lissandra. Why didn't why didn't I just pair with? With like Leona and or and and Jarvan, like that comp looks nutty. Like that comp looks so good uh, when you have that much. But obviously they they draft Rexai and like Rexai does nothing later. He gets one shot in every fight, and like it, it turns out that the game the game went the game went to forty minutes. Like they they lasted longer than most other people, but they still like 
It seemed like if they had a better draft, they could have won, I think. Yeah. Uh, like you were saying, definitely a FlyQuest draft. This game in particular yeah. is just a little questionable. Uh, Rek'Sai and competitive. I think uh, I will dominate tweeted about this he was like yeah he hates Rek'Sai in competitive because like he knows that champion obviously like pretty well and he's like yeah like the later the game goes it's just gonna be fucking doomed uh which it is for Rek'Sai because that, that that champion like falls off so hard like it is actually like crazy and especially in competitive where like games are slow and like people don't make as many mistakes as they do um it is just really, really hard to play that champion unless you're contracts i guess because <laughs> that guy actually smurfed on Rek'Sai one game but that was because he made some like oh, really dude, good that early was plays. so troll <laughs> no, that was actually no, dirty don't but say like he smurf don't say he smurfed all right tl's bad my bad because <laughs> like dude, actually i actually okay so talk about tla so tla against 100 thieves like 100 percent that bot lane gank uh chow uh was like too far up and like he died because rex i flashed on him all right that's fine well it was an interesting it was an interesting uh path and, and i wrote this down in my notes but um contracts he did three camps bot side and then gank bot lane so so <laughs> so right now most of the time you you do you only do your red on when you're playing blue side you usually only do your red and then you go do blue and crop right mm-hmm. so Contract switches is up. He does three camps bot side, hits level three. He comes around behind bot lane, like con- like that big wall on bot lane, tunnels over, and, you know, obviously the bot lane doesn't think this is going to happen because they're like, Rex, I started bot side. He'll go top side. We'll be safe. We're under tower. And, like, they're getting pushed in, so they probably think they're really safe, right? Mm-hmm. So he shows up. He ganks, right? But then the troll part, and this, this is bullshit, honestly. <laughs> the bullshit part is where... Uh, who is it? Freaking tactical, right? Yeah, tactical's on TLA. Tactical just fucking doesn't <laughs> flash. Down, he just he 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 like he didn't clear the 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 tunnel that um contracts use. So contract just walks around on Rexai, uses the tunnel again, and then he knows Rexai doesn't have flash, but he just doesn't flash. Like yeah. he could just flash away and live, and he just he just doesn't flash, and he dies. I guess and he it, was just so tilted. He was just like, "Oh shit, fuck it." Yeah, <laughs> and it's not like he has TP either. He has heal, so he loses the whole wave bot lane. It bot it, it's fucking over. Like it, it's just. Yeah. <laughs> also, this game, hundred thieves got fucking a collie. So Lego got a collie. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure this shit was over anyway. I'm pretty sure that's the only time <laughs> I've ever seen a collie open this past two weeks. I mean, seriously yeah that's a little disrespectful from tla to just leave it open there like that like what were their bands actually okay they banned uh, lucian elise and uh and senna so then akali gets first picked and then their counter is set affilios by then so, they, so you get you do get two power picks for one right but like is set really that much of a power pick uh i don't know man Akali's just broken on 10.2, so I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, and and then, you know, y- you draft Aphelios, but, like, the enemy, they got uh, Zyra Khan on the other side, so, like, Aphelios can lose that matchup because of, because Zyra Khan's just, like, pretty, really good. Mm-hmm. And then you draft Thresh instead of drafting, like, Nautilus or Leona. I mean, like, it just seems pretty just disrespectful. Wanted- to get a, a, a comfort pick for uh chow because like in every single academy game i watch he's in he's just like running it down i don't know what's going on with him but uh he's just not playing like well at all he's just yeah. like getting ganked just like dying and stuff like that and like every single like other support is just like doing better than him so i'm not sure what's going on there whether it's like a confidence issue performance issue whatever it is but like this guy has to step up his play like 100 percent. yeah and maybe tld just had like a like a tough schedule, right? Because they play Dig and Hundred Thieves, who are who are both first and second right now. Mm-hmm. So may- maybe that's a tough schedule, but I think in the first week they played. <clears throat> I'm trying to see real quick who they played in the first week. Sorry. But you know, it's just that uh, TL like at, as a team, even if Shurnfire was on this team instead of Mike Young, I don't see them doing any better than they are right now. I mean, cause... jungle matters a lot, though, don't you think? uh maybe maybe like mike young just not talking enough or like someone someone needs to like speak up and like actually be like a vocal voice on this team because it feels like 
they're just not doing anything and they're just losing slowly every single game. Yeah, or kind of like getting stomped out in the Yeah, cuz it's just like case. individual mistakes which lead to like bigger mistakes and then just bigger leads for the enemy team and it's just you know, TL just like slowly die every single uh, game I watch. Yeah, and maybe and maybe TL, you know, they're like, "Oh, we got to have a roster that's kind of cheap because, you know, our 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 real roster costs up a jillion dollars." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you you know, Brox is not coming cheap. <laughs> True. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so T- TLA 0-4, uh, and they actually played Cloud9 and TSM Academy in the in the first week, and that, um, th- those teams are both 2-2, two and two, so it's, it, there's not much hope for who they're going to beat, the, like, it really depends. The only other team that's 0-4 is CLG. Yeah, and so I guess we could talk about CLG right now. CLG oh, is my yikes, God. bro. <laughs> so, it's, they had 6 a in. Which was interesting. I'm not sure what's going on there. I guess Wind has like visa issues. Or yeah, Wind is having visa there. issues. So they had stakes in, and like I don't know. It looks like CLG just also don't know what they're doing in a way. Yeah, it's doesn't look good. I mean, like just the plays that they're making are like really iffy. Um, in the CLG game, in the CLG versus TSM game, <clears throat> like there's like some there's some sort of miscommunication because, uh, there's a play mid lane we were talking about we referenced this earlier, but Fragus is level four on Olaf, uh, and he's no Trundle, sorry, and he's running into evolved uh, Syndra, level who six. is level six, level <laughs> six by the way, and he's based, so he has Dorans and, and an Amp Tome. And he he runs up, he gets hit by the stun and the Q, he gets hit by the W, and then <laughs> Evolved presses R and he dies. Yeah. And he's level four, so it's like, why are you even trying to make this gank happen on Trundle? You have, it's it's Trundle LeBlanc, like, wh- where is the CC here? You only have, you don't have a stun or anything, like, you're obviously going to die when you run in here. Like, mm-hmm. it's it, it, really dumb, and... Obviously, they got stomped out this game. Like when you when your jungler runs it down, <laughs> freaking level four into the enemy mid laner, it's really yeah. bad. TSM got four Jakes to zero. They got Mountain Soul. Um, it was also um, uh, what's it called? Like GPL came down too. So. Oh yeah, GPL too. <laughs> so that was a little bit of damage, right? But like he basically walked out of it. Yeah. But evolved had the counter pick. Um, he had Syndra versus LeBlanc, so he had counter, and Lost was playing Aphelios, which. Like from his week one, he he looked like a really good Aphelios, even though they lost. But this week, like they just kind of rolled them over. Twenty eight minutes. CLG looks really bad. Just don't know what to yeah. say. Like it's uh, both so teams. I guess Fragus and Tuesday really wanted to punish that flash from Evolve, but when he's level six, it's kind of hard to match that damage uh, against Syndra early on uh, when you're yeah. LV, I guess. So, and he's struggles, means- so like he doesn't have a lot of CC, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's possible to match the damage, but, like, Evolve didn't even pay attention to Tuesday when he went in. He legit just focused the Trundle because... Yeah, because that's a free he, kill. <laughs> he's, le- he's level four. Like, you, you're going to kill him. Like, it. all he had was a Ruby Crystal for, like, uh, health. So he just got one shot, basically, right? So it kind of mm-hmm. sucks. Um, but obvi- they didn't look good anyway. Like, they... Yeah, I mean, they make that mid-play, Tuesday was getting smashed by... Evolved yeah. that game, so and evolves a newbie while Tuesday's been in the academy for like a, a while now, so a couple years now, yeah. So, t- so TSM, um, they did lose actually, no, they went 2 0 this week. If I, yeah, no, they, they lost, they lost to EG. Sorry, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. it was uh, <laughs> talk- yeah, yeah, so they lost to EG, okay, EG. so EG got two new pickups because of visa issues, so like, yeah, is this the their jungler- full roster? Like, I know uh, Anda is like on the team now. Yeah, but so are they still Anda's waiting on for the theirs? team? I think they're still getting. I, I think they're still waiting for confirmation on their mid, but they have five fire for now. Yeah. Um, but EG with this roster, honestly, it doesn't look that bad. I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah, I think they're they're who they're waiting for is Giyu. I think his name is. Um, uh, maybe I'm I'm not too familiar with the uh, EG's academy roster, but this roster, however, looked pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, they went two zero, but uh. Anda looked really good in, in both the games they played, mm-hmm. um, and 
definitely was really straight carrying. up smurfing. Straight, straight smurfing, <laughs> straight smurfing. Obviously, like he, he was straight yeah. smurfing. Um, he got MF in one game, and he was really just shitting on kids. Like, <laughs> it's just not even close. Yeah, it was as long it, as it was um, the uh, Golden Guardian team. Yeah, as long as Anda, who's on uh, J four, and Matt, who's on Nautilus, like they just get the right engage off. Like MF could just have the room to just do damage. Yeah, and, and this is why you should just play easy comps, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, let's just play Jarvan Nautilus. That ship's that, that's easy to run. Meanwhile, Dig Academy over here running no engage. Like, all right, man, you guys got to mess up. We're we're better than you. So <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, Eiji drafted pretty easy comps to work around. The MF again beat Aphelio, so maybe MF is what should be prior. Maybe. maybe I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it might be fifty fifty who wins, but like the MF has been looking really good. Um, and obviously she had priority in Korea, so maybe she's just, maybe Sen is not the pick. Maybe it's MF that people should be like looking at. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so EG had some good games this week after going 0-2 last week. Um, I'm glad to see, uh, them bouncing back. <clears throat> Another team that played this week that had, uh, a little bit of a bounce back was IMT. So they went mm-hmm. one and one in the first week. They went two and zero in the second week. Granted, one of the wins was, I believe, versus Golden Guardians, who was second. And it was Soraka Bot from Gorka. So, yikes, gotta say. Uh, is Soraka Bot? I thought Soraka Top was, like, the only thing, right? Uh, Supposedly, you could flex Soraka in, like, four of those lanes or whatever. Four? I'm, I'm not sure what LS said, but, like, Soraka, like... Top, Soraka Bot, Soraka Support, like, I think it's all, like, somewhat viable. I think it's just the uh, the way that they drafted that game in particular was just uh, yikes for me, personally. Um, mm. So, like, you know, like, when you have, uh, obviously, Soraka, you kind of need to have a team around Soraka to, like, help her do her thing. And, like... All they have are tools to, like, just go forward. <laughs> so, like, they have Huhi, who's on Senna support, which I'm not sure why, but I guess, you know, double healing, OP. Uh, and then you have Oriana, who's, like... Shielding. Yeah, shielding. Like, it's not even, like, peel, I can say. It's just, you know, assisting with not dying as fast. Uh, and then you have two hard, hard engage champions in uh, Set and J4. So, like, the Soraka Baj is kind of just, like, weirdly placed. Like, if they actually just had, like, Senna AD and then, like, I don't know, like, Braum support, support or something I mean, I like that. I think the Soraka support would have been fine, right, if you have Senna AD. Uh, I mean, it, I think the game's going to end up the same way, maybe. I'm not, I'm not uh, entirely sure, but. Well, <laughs> the thing was that, like, Zaya was, like, 70 CS up versus Soraka, like, at, like, 15 minutes. So I think if that's a Senna ADC, like, you're not down, like, 70 CS, right? You're down, like, maybe 15, maybe 20. Yeah, maybe the game would have been a little bit better, but, like, I think uh, IMT's engage was just a lot better. Like, they have Pantheon and Rakan. Like, it's kind of hard to beat that engage, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. But Yeah, like, even, even if uh, Golden Guardians were, like, super, or that... Not, like, super far ahead, but, like, they were ahead enough to, like, make engages happens with, like, J4 and Set. I think the follow-up from, like, Soraka, Oriana, and Senna wouldn't have been enough compared to, like, the re-engage from, like, Rakan, Pantheon, Zaya, Syndra, you know? Yeah, yeah. I- I'm kind of glad Pantheon's starting to come into the meta now. Like, um, more people are picking him. I-, I don't think he was bad. Like, he's not bad. He's pretty good and competitive, um, especially as, like, an AD mid option. Mm-hmm. There's kind of like a lot of um, magic damage coming from a lot of places. Yeah. Uh, but you know the he, I think uh, it it didn't look awful. Like it was actually pretty good the Pantheon because he was just like fucking diving in, shitting on people real quick. Um, so it was good. But Zion Spartan was really keeping them for Golden Guardians. At least Zion Spartan set was like keeping them in the game. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, obviously they lost their Infernal Soul and then they lose the game. <laughs> nice. uh, I think we got two more teams to talk about TSM and C9 Academy. I th- TSM we touched on a little bit, right? Uh, a little bit, but we could... Yeah, yeah, so Evolve looked pretty good this week. 
He had, yeah. like I said, uh, he like Shadow Counter Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, he had the Syndra matchup, but then obviously he there was the game versus IMT. Mm-hmm. No, 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 not IMT. Why am I, I saying IMT? EG, 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 EG. This is the one where EG like slowly choked them out the entire yeah. game. They actually played um, that game really well, honestly. Yeah, for me, I think that's I think that's what they. So this was the game that was showed last on Friday. Um, mm-hmm. So it was streamed fully, and Wiggly was on, and he was saying <clears throat> that this is the kind of game you kind of want to see from an academy team where there's not many kills. You play it out pretty cleanly, um, and you know it's pretty it's a pretty even game, but. Like, they were building slow leads and, and using that to kind of, like, win the game, right? And they had Defley, who was playing pretty well, obviously. Anda was also playing really well, so, like, they were just kind of, like, playing this low. And this is kind of, like, what you see from, like, they have two L- people who were on LCS for a couple years. So, it's like, they're like, okay, guys, we're, we got the lead now. Let's chill. We can slowly win, slowly take advantages, and, and that way, like, you know, you're able to close out the game pretty cleanly. Mm-hmm. Um, they do have Brandini, who I know is, like, a bit tough to work with, apparently, in comms. Um, uh, yeah, supposedly. <laughs> supposedly. But Five Fire came in for the two games. He didn't look great in his games, but he played well enough. He played Pantheon this game. Um, wasn't amazing, but, like, he, he did well enough. It was mostly Deathly, who was... Really caring, honestly. On um, yeah, so that he definitely was playing Senna, and it was Senna yeah. Tom Kench, obviously. So like fucking mm-hmm. uh, Senna just fucking d- doesn't yeah. Fucking Senna die. Tom Kench against uh, TSM's comp, which didn't have any like reliable engage. Once again, teams just not going for engage champions, I guess. Yeah, uh, and the last team to talk about Club Nine won one and one. Mm-hmm. Uh, lost to IMT. And Unfortunately, beat, beat FlyQuest <laughs> Academy. Yeah. Uh, the FlyQuest game, it was Fly really threw. Kind of when like they were like they were ahead in they were pretty ahead or even in gold, right? But what ends up happening is FlyQuest allowed Cloud Nine to get three Drakes. And then they're fighting for the fourth Drake, and King steals the Drake with a, an Aphelia Soul. So then Cloud9 just get Ocean Soul, the fucking strongest soul. <laughs> and then they just win 20, at 28 minutes because they've got, they got the soul, and then it's, it's, it's fucking over. They win the fight. They steal the Ocean Soul, they go to Baron, and then they, they get the Baron, and they end the game right after. Like, the game was basically even until... Until they, that. Yeah, until they <laughs> It was basically even aside from the fact that they have one team had three drakes and then you get the fourth drake and this is why it's dangerous to let a team get three drakes because you could you could lose that fourth drake off a of steal and then the game is over <laughs> depending yeah. on which which soul it is right like if, when it's yeah, ocean soul then it it matters a mm-hmm. lot especially when um uh, so like even like just letting a team have like three dragons when you have zero that like that just puts so much pressure on your team alone. It's just like, all right, guys, we kind of like have to get this or else we're going to like die or like not die, but, you know, like lose the game pretty much. Yeah. Um, and especially with the way like FlyQuest fought over that, like where they just all in on the play, like it just it just didn't look good from them. Yeah. Uh, obviously, FlyQuest, they're probably looking at that game in particular and been like, we probably should have won this. But they obviously have to find out where they mis-executed and stuff like that. So... Uh, but yeah, I mean like C9, uh, they still don't have King, uh, in the facility or whatever. So like the uh, stage games, like he's, he's just not even there. He's like playing. Oh, is he playing on ping? Yeah, I think so. He's playing like remotely somewhere. I'm not sure, but, um, I'm not sure where, well, King is from O's, so yeah, I doubt he's playing from O's, right? That would be really troll, wouldn't it? That'd be really (laughs) troll. He's probably playing from Canada, I think. I think yeah, a lot probably. of the times players go to Canada while they wait for their visas for America. Yeah, because it's easier to get a visa for Canada. And especially because you're not making... I think it's, it's mostly because you're, like, not doing anything in Canada. Like, technically, you're not... 
doing anything yeah. like legally wrong when you're in Canada when you and you're playing in America like offline mm-hmm. or online I mean so that kind of thing um but I mean C9 they still look pretty good I would say uh you know they they have these uh OS players but they still have you know Anori Diamond who are like pretty familiar with uh the scene I would say Anori so, making a comeback Ooh. of course of course I I liked his Rengar when he was in the league in 2017 but yeah Aside from that, you know, he's he's kind of been here and there, right? Yeah. Um, I think he last... played uh, in a wild card region for a little bit. Did he? I, I don't know where he went. I think so. I think yeah. he did. Yeah. So my last thing I want to talk about in Academy right before we end is um, how 100 Thieves finally, like, they they drafted and they punished something. So CLG picks MF Braum. And mm-hmm. 100 Thieves then proceeds to counter by picking Lulu, Aphilios, Oriana. So you probably know, but it, it as Braum, who are you punishing in lane? You are not punishing <laughs> not, anyone. <laughs> exactly. So so basically giving the, the mage support, especially when it's with Aphilios, right? You pair it with Aphilios. That shit's broken. That shit's broken. That, look, that shit look dominant. Freaking... But Wolf, also... Like, CLG's draft was just fucking garbage. <laughs> I forgot I mean, to say this earlier, but this draft is like a hot doo doo. Yeah, I mean, they draft. <laughs> it's literally like, all right, we have Braum and then two ADs and Vlad. <laughs> yeah. Like, J4 doesn't even have to be in this, like, equation. It's oh, just yeah, like, they first picked Lucian. I remember now. Jesus Christ. Dude. Like, they first picked the Lucian, but they then, like, reveal that it's going to go mid or top. And I'm like, why? Well, yeah, you know it's gonna go mid or top. Like, it, I mean, you you have to draft them MF MF because they might ban it, and like that's like the best pick versus Aphilios. But mm-hmm. just like the fact that uh, they just got hard out drafted, dude. Like, it's just yeah. Um, I mean, the uh, hundred thieves coach Kelsey, right? Kelsey Muzzer, yeah. Smurf. <laughs> Smurfing, yeah. They won this game in twenty five minutes. Contracts look bad though. Like, there's this clip of him on Reddit. Where he like walks up for a dive on Vladimir and like just cues a minion, gets himself killed, like <laughs> yeah, there are definitely some good. small mistakes, but you yeah. know the uh, Lulu pick was definitely unexpected, but when it's into Brahm, it's kind of free. <laughs> yeah, it, and and that's the thing. Like, shouldn't you? Like, they saw the MF Brahm get picked, and then they proceed to pick Lulu on the next round, and it's like, well, now we just win bot lane, and you can't kill the Sophilios. Yeah. Especially when they drafted Oriana right after, so it's like you're not ki- you're never killing this affiliate. If you try and dive onto Aphilios, Oriana you're has Shockwave on die. top of you, <laughs> Lulu ulti. Like you're not like they. Yeah, just, you're just like, they don't have dive orn. champions because they yeah. they already opted into the two ADC comp. So yeah, so as soon as, draft as, soon as they so drafted, bad. I mean they could have done Lucian top maybe, but versus Orn like. It doesn't yeah. look great, so, uh, there's just not much to that's So just, that's just the one thing I finally saw. And bad. this is someone peop- something people have been talking about, freaking drafting like a mage support into like this bullshit, like Tom Kench, Braum kind yeah. of shit that you see, mm-hmm. right? Like when when you draft this kind of stuff, like I want to see like someone pick Zyra. I want to see someone pick like like Nami and just punch the fuck out of you and lane like you and, you know, just, just lose yeah. lane really badly. It's right? honestly how it should be, but people like handshaking you know support for or tank support for tank support because you know it's easier to like get vision and get words without like getting picked off and like some of them have like pretty good and reliable engage like leona and nautilus which people handshake a lot uh, i think that's different though i think i think w- what bothers me is the brom tom catch not so much the nautilus leona oh yeah that shit's bad <laughs> yeah like when you're handshaking brom and tom catch you're fucking trolling like Pick the counter pick. You're, like they're not gonna do anything in lane. They don't do anything in lane. Like just yeah. do something. They don't do anything like super fancy. Anyways, it's like pretty yeah. one dimensional. Especially Tom Kench. Like teams that like pick Tom Kench in LCS. Like first pick are just actually trolling. Trolling. I think it actually got first picked in fucking Korea, and I'm glad it lost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it lost. I didn't want to see that shit. No. Uh, so that's good at least. Um. So moving so on from moving. academy. To to LCS. LCS. Uh, Cloud9. 4 0. <laughs> top of the standings. Uh, PogChamp, I gotta say. Uh, they look yeah, really Cloud good. Nine. Uh, yeah, they do. 
uh, they were against IMT and 100 Thieves. So uh, f- probably for them, it didn't look that tough for them. Because uh, IMT, like, after the first week, I think a lot of people just realized that this team is just not as good as they thought it was. It's- um, do you want to add to that? Well, I mean, no, you can continue. I'll say that. Uh, and then 100 Thieves are still trying to, like, find their voice. Because, like, I think the main problem with 100 Thieves is that back then when they had this roster of like Medios, Cody's son, and Someday, is that they had Ryu and Afro to be like the voices on the team. So now they have Ryoma and Stunt, who like aren't as big voices compared to those two other players. So they're still trying to find their voice, but like C9 is just like super duper good. Zven is definitely like on form, and uh, yeah, like this team just playing really really well. Yeah, and Niski getting counter pick. I think he got Morgana counter into LeBlanc. So even even though I hated on Ryoma pretty hard last week, he looked better this week, I have to say. Um, hey, man, he's learning fast. He's learn- <laughs> Yeah, hopefully he's learning fast. Um, he didn't look awful on the LeBlanc, but he was countered, so there's not much you can really do. Uh, I know there's a funny clip of him like trying to escape Camillo. That was on Reddit. Oh, uh, yeah. But I've done, that sh- I've done that shit like a bajillion <laughs> times. Like, you can't fucking get out of it. Like, I get triggered because, like, I, yep. I, I'm just dead. I'm just dead. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I mean, 100 Thieves 2 and 2. Immortals 2 and 2. You know, they're pretty, like, not. They're not very. They're not hard opponents. I think 100 Thieves is probably better than Immortals, right? Uh, pff, Right now, probably. But, like, I think at peak um i'm still gonna go with 100 thieves though because i don't i don't know how well i could could like perform better because during the c9 game he just got solo killed by fucking niski <laughs> like randomly well, so. dude because it's pantheon versus yasuo first of all first of all imt's drafting is not great because they fourth pick yasuo on red side instead of waiting to see what the enemy mid laner is gonna pick and then five mm-hmm. picking it um but basically yeah they do that and they get Fucking shit. A Pantheon counterpick into Yasuo. And then he proceeds to die level two. Like, yeah, because he was like too far up. and like Yeah, he was too far up because he wanted the last two minions. And then he got one shot. <laughs> uh, so yep, yeah, that I mean, sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, Nisky just ran a clinic on his ass. Like, he was just like, yeah, I'm 05, whatever. You know, power spiking. <laughs> Goddamn Yasuo, bro. Goddamn Yasuo players, man. Um... But yeah, IMT look kind of bad. It's surprising that they're one and one. Like, it's yeah, uh, mainly because uh, what's it called? Uh, TSM like threw that game like pretty hard. But like, yeah. you know, both teams were just stalling and waiting. <laughs> so, well, I mean, I guess they're better than Golden Guardians, right? Because they beat them. That was yeah. kind of like an important match for them to play to be better than Golden Guardians. Mm-hmm. So, that's I'm I'm happy for them. Uh, they got their two wins, but I doubt they're going to pick many more up now that uh, the rest of the season is coming. They still have to play CLG. Well, actually, they might get another win versus CLG. CLG. Right? Oh, no. Not oh, like no. this. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, I think the important matchup for them would be like 100 Thieves, EG. Uh, those are the two teams they kind of need to beat to like be middle of the pack-ish, mm-hmm. right? But yeah. looks like they're definitely gonna lose to probably Dig and TL. Uh, so yeah, IMT not looking great. At least they're four and four, right? Uh, two and two. Two and two. Sorry, I was saying four and four because yeah, it's all good, okay. man. Yeah, at least they're two and two. I was doing math. You're just adding, yeah. You're just adding. Yeah, I was, the just, I was just adding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. So IMT lucky to be two and two. Hundred thieves. You, uh, they look kind of spotty. Their early games are weak, honestly. Uh, yeah, I think, like I said, like I just think that they need to find like their voice because I think they're lacking that like really badly. Uh, it just seems like they aren't doing anything like amazing. You know, they're kind of just like playing the game and just like seeing how it goes. <laughs> yeah, but their 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 two wins are versus. CLG and Golden Guardians, mm-hmm. and the two like, lost tough opponents. Yeah, with the, well, the, the, those are like the worst teams, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that and that's like the thing where like of where you rank them because they lost to EG already, right? 
So yeah. if we're looking at the teams that are left, it's Dig, FlyQuest, Immortals, TL, TSM. You expect them to lose to Dig, FlyQuest, TL, and TSM, right? Because mm-hmm. those teams are supposedly better with better rosters. But like, and then that puts them at like what eighth place? Like, if, they, <laughs> if they can't beat Immortals, then they're in their eighth. And like that's, that's where look <laughs> it looks it looks bad, right? Like it looks like they might be out of playoffs because FlyQuest and Dignitas are surprisingly really good, really good. And then Evil Geniuses they already lost to, so they're like you got shown that you're worse than them, right? So that puts yeah. them that would put them at seventh. They're out of playoffs, which I thought they'd be like a top three roster coming in. So yikes! It is what it is. <laughs> Some teams on paper are just not as good as uh, you know when it comes to actually playing the game. But uh, Golden Guardians uh, picking the Soraka top for Haunter is definitely a very interesting pick. <laughs> you thought it like I don't know. I think Haunter. I think you need to put Haunter on a carry. Honestly, I just think that playing Soraka into like. Rakan and like these like playmaking like engage supports is just a bad idea because <laughs> you I have mean, like zero agency when it comes to like picking fights and you kind of just like have to play off hey look i'm soraka i could heal a shit ton and whatnot yeah people were contrasting the golden guardians drafting soraka versus g2 drafting soraka and most people are just like guys man you're not g2 here you can't play this. You can't play this kind of comp. Um, and I was like, you know what? You're right. You can't play that kind of comp. You're not good enough to pull this shit off. Like, yeah. And so you know, Golden Guardians maybe trying to like too hard on what they're doing, right? They like. Yeah, I think Golden Guardians have to find like their play style first, and also Keith has to like stop running it down. But oh my god, that's another I, thing. To we do. talked about this before, <laughs> uh, separate like off. Air, but, but Keith is like actually Keith running it down running in it like down, games, dude. which like at first you actually didn't believe me, but now you believe me. I didn't me. believe you. I didn't believe you. Running it down, <laughs> but I watched a game with my own eyes. I was, bro, I, was I was watching was him closely. You. I was, I was watching him closely because I really wanted to see what was going on. And I'll give you this example. Mm-hmm. Um, four people. They're they're walking out of bot side Dragon River, right? Two people are kind of ahead. They're you know they start walking through mid lane, the mid end. You know, so it's Golden Glue and uh, and their ADC. Sorry, lost. No, not lost. FBI, bro. FBI. Sorry. <laughs> uh, OS, OS imports. Whatever. Yeah, man. FBI. So, so Golden Different Glue one. and FBI are ahead, and they they walk through mid lane, right? Their their enemies are still kind of far away. They're by tier one, so they just walk through mid lane, and then closer. You know, he's playing Lee Sin. He sees that like the enemy is like walking through mid lane, like getting really close. So he's like, I'm gonna walk the other way. I'll walk around. I'll walk around. Keith oblivious. He's playing Tom Kench. So he's not mobile at all. He's still walking right through mid lane. And, he, and, and it's like he's surprised when he gets caught out. Like, oh shit, they went on me. Like, bro, your whole team literally just went the safe way because they couldn't walk through there. And he just gets caught out and dies. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? It's actually troll. It's like he's not even thinking about where he's walking. Uh, yeah. Like. Just based on week one, like he was just getting randomly caught out mid and just dying for it. And I was like, what is he doing? And like, he's still doing it week two. So hopefully yeah. in, in week three, he could like try to like stop dying as much. Yeah. And like Golden Guardians, they have Huhi, who's been playing support for like a while now, much longer than Keith. But I guess they value that synergy between FBI and Keith so much. And like, there has to be something is going that on really there. that much synergy? Like, I mean, I don't know, man. For like, a few weeks. This shit just seems hella troll from the start. This whole Keith going to support thing. Yeah. Like, obviously, it works sometimes. You know, like, famously, Aphromoo, Corey JJ, yeah. they all played AD before and swapped to support. Now, obviously, they weren't all good at the start. Like, even Corey, like, came to the defense of Keith. He's like, hey, man, I was 1-9 the first week of LCK when he played support. So, but Keith's 1-9. 22 or something like that oh like my, I, that stat was crazy he has he has He's so many really deaths running it's actually it down. crazy yeah like he has the most deaths on his team by far every single game because he he's just getting caught already? randomly probably i don't know yeah he had three isolated deaths too like <laughs> how do you have isolated deaths as a support man like you really must be he's running like, it down he's like over extending for like dumb shit and it's just like what yeah. are you doing bro yeah, so rest rest in peace, Golden Guardians. One and three right now. They did get a win over EG, 
this week. Yeah, so I which is talk about also <laughs> yikes for EG. Like, why so. are you losing a game to this team? Uh, so, bro, EG coming into the split, they were like, "Look, man, we're coming for TL." But like, y'all gotta like get up there first. Like, yeah, they're one. You guys three. are struggling so badly right now. It's like not even funny. Um, if you're losing to like these really, really like bad teams, uh, you guys are like just not playing as well as you guys probably thought you were going to be playing. And like against TSM, like their draft was a little sus, honestly, like, all right, so they already picked Grog is set. All right, guys, we're going to last pick Kindred. Like that shit is so bad. Why? Why would you pick Kindred into... Uh, two champions set in Gragas who can displace you in your ulti, which happened in the game multiple times. Yeah. So, and, and the only reason like the TSM game even looked close is because Darduck was really running it down at the start. Like, yeah, but and, TSM had a better team fighting comp. Yeah, so. better team fighting comp, and then Darduck pulled it together in the team fights. Jazuke looked okay, but in the last few, like he looked good in the early part of the game, but in like three fights, he like distortions in. Gets hit and by dies. a CC, and then he <laughs> dies. And it was like, all right, well, what exactly were you planning on doing here, Chief? You, you got one shot because you're not – like you're late to team fights or you're you're walking into team fights and getting one shot because you get hit by a CC because you dash mm-hmm. into it. Like that's basically what happened. He dashed into a CC and died. So like yeah. ridi- kind of ridiculous. Um, So EG went 0-2 this week. Their only yeah. win is – I mean like Bang's still trying to like hard carry yeah. – <laughs> but no, like, I don't even. I, I don't even know, man. Bang, Bang, just, I, I, Bang never hit me like as big. <laughs> right? He he never looks like he's super just playing AD, to me. man. He's just playing AD. He's just you know I'm chilling. You know maybe my team does something. Maybe not. You know support gap. I don't yeah. know. it's kind of like that's the thing. Like EG lost to <laughs> EG lost to Golden Guardians, but they beat Hundred Thieves. So like, are they all like chilling in like seventh bottom, or ninth yeah bottom, bottom four. four yeah like that's the thing like these teams come in swinging like yo i'm about to be top five baby not nah, top th- eg even said yo top one baby come at me and they're like oh you're one in three and you lost the golden guardians lmao like yeah i mean when you set your expectations so high and you end up crashing this hard like there has to be something wrong here like irene like or that's the coach's name right irene yeah 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 Bro, you got to, like, work on your drafts, man. Like, you can't be last picking Sus. Kendrick into Sus. that shit, you know? Like, that is just <laughs> that is just bad. Like, 100% Sus. bad. Um, yeah. Dominic but, was really flaming it. <laughs> the Kendrick Yeah, picks. I mean, like, when you pick that shit, too. like, that is just that is just terrible. And, like, obviously, the uh, Golden Guardians game, picking Sona Tom Kench in uh, this meta is just uh, kind of bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I almost forgot that it was a Sona Tom Kench game. But yeah, like the, the, the I mean, I think people really would have hated it if it won though, right? So Yeah, one hundred percent. So good thing Golden good Guardians. Thing they, good thing Golden saving Guardians. Saving the day. <laughs> saving saving the league. I didn't want to see Double F playing fucking Sona, man. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate bless that up. shit. <laughs> bless up, bless up. Um so now we've talked about three of the bottom teams, I think. Yeah, we talked about C9, IMT, 100 Thieves, and GGS. So Yeah, so the last Echo team Knights. at the bottom. <laughs> CLG. What, CLG? Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> man, my it God, actually, bro. It actually took oh, me a second oh, for me to click. But, <laughs> yeah, man, I don't know. CLG is looking really sus in the TSM game. Uh, Ruin got completely outclassed by uh, Broken Blade, which is really Stomp. funny. <laughs> like that is just that is just Ooh. not good buddy you gotta like you gotta win those you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah and, and and the worst thing i think is that they gave him last last so yeah bro they side, gave him they gave, they gave him, him counter last pick. pick they gave him counter pick motherfucker bro. counter picks orn with <laughs> silas yeah this man got demolished he was like 20 cs down like five six seven i think it was more than that but yeah he was definitely down no, a he shit was like 20 CS. down early like seven eight minutes in the game he was like down 20 like it was yeah. really bad <laughs> bro uh, when that shit happens in my solo queue games it's like can can i get a first pick for anyone and then and then and then i give it to them and then i'm like all right man we're last pick red side what do you want bro i own all the champions i give it to him first blood and i'm like what'd you do bro like <laughs> Yo, how like, did that why? shit happen what? like if you if you were gonna like 
and sometimes I see people counterpick themselves. I'm just like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, man? it's like, like bro, like, like if you're on, gonna bro. if you're gonna ask for counterpick, at least know the matchups. Which like obviously it, when you're a pro player, you should know the matchups when you're counterpicking a champion. And if you have no idea what's a good counterpick into Orn, you should probably do some research because there's so many champions in the game that there's at least one or a couple counterpicks for each champion at this point. Yeah, but. E- even even new champions like you know Aphelio Silent or Aphelio Senna like there are definitely like counters to that quote unquote like yeah. it just seems really dumb that like they gave him counter pick and then he just underperformed so hard that Broken Blade was just able to just run him over yeah and like TSM won the CLG game just by like these small leads and like CS and stuff and like obviously like some good team fighting and stuff like that. So that that was, yikes, dude! <laughs> yikes. I mean, I at least like T- TSM bounced back um, this week, so that's the thing. But here's the thing for me is that CLG had a rough schedule. We didn't know they had a rough schedule until like people started playing. Right? They had yeah. a rough schedule. They had Dig in the first game, then they had FlyQuest in the second game in week one. So, you know, both teams that are 3-1. and one, So, like, you know, kind of rough. Like, especially because they didn't have a lot of practice. and But they looked bad anyway. Mm-hmm. Week 2, you play 100 Thieves, who is, like, supposedly kind of on your level, right? So, right now, we're, we're thinking 100 Thieves is kind of, like, bottom 4-ish, bottom 5-ish. Um, at the moment. So, at the moment. So, at <laughs> least, like, you know, maybe they're just worse than 100 Thieves. And TSM is supposed to be at the top, right? So, you know, again, kind of a rough schedule. Three teams you're kind of supposed to lose to. At hundred thieves, who kind of like what you? That's like a matchup you kind of wanted to win. This mm-hmm. next week they have EG and IMT. Both hopefully they could at the win. bottom, <laughs> right? Like hopefully, like hopefully they win it. Because if they don't win, they could go like oh nine. Like bro, <laughs> if they go zero and six at the end of week three, it's actually doomed. For it's that actually team. doomed. You can't. Nobody's ever gone zero and six in mid playoffs. Yeah. It's Only actually, Cloud9 like, has gone like 0 and 5 in main playoffs. Yeah, and because Cloud9's nuts. But Cloud9's also, nuts. LCS is scripted, anyways. LCS is scripted, uh, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, uh, CLG so, just. It looks like they have no clue what they're doing, honestly. Yeah. Which is sad because, like, you know, Stick Say, Smoothie, like, they're all good individual players, but it looks like it's just not working out. No. Uh, I, I mean, but even CLG A is fucking 0 4. <laughs> yeah it looks like clg just they haven't won a uh, game dying. yet yeah neither team <laughs> so morale at the clg league of legends Facility part of the org is just be, like uh, bottom yeah they GG. must have some low ass morale right now low ass morale i mean maybe crown's like phoning in maybe crown's like hey man i'm getting this paycheck bro chilling <laughs> who cares whatever because at least on optic he was like hard carrying some games but like now he's like, oh, I'm chilling, whatever, you know. Yeah, he's just like uh, playing the game. <laughs> yeah, Wiggly's playing really bad after like playing pretty well in the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe, maybe, and here's the thing with the smoothie trade that happened with Bio, is that <clears throat> people are saying like bot lane is support difference, right, for laning, mm-hmm. and Smoothie's not known for his laning. Like he, he's actually thought of as being like a bad laner. Um, so when you By switch out stick A, <laughs> yeah, according to double lift, smoothie is a bad laner. So then when you switch out biofrost for smoothie, then stick A gets a worse laner. And I mean, biofrost and stick A look like top three bot lane last in the summer. They so, look terrible. Yeah. So maybe now, like, because he has smoothie, like their laning is worse. Ruin is losing lane even harder than he was before. Crown's like going even, but he's not winning anything, and Wiggly's playing worse. That team looks like it's in the th- like if you have no winning lanes, you're gonna lose every game. Yeah, which is making it really hard for Wiggly to do anything. <laughs> yeah, but even even if he was playing well, like they're all his lanes are losing, right? So yeah, it's honestly crazy that like when they did the trade for Smoothie for Bio, like I just think that that trade like TSM 100 wins that trade because like. Biofrost was just—he's just a big voice on the teams that he's on now. 
like after TSM, like when he was on CLG, he was like quote unquote the shot caller. Like he was yeah. a very vocal player. And now they have Smoothie, who's also known to be a very vocal player, but maybe not in the same way or in the same sense. Um, maybe but, not as good at it. Too. Yeah, maybe, you know? So right now, CLG, it just looks like they're just lacking everything. And it looks like that they just don't know what they really want to do. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of Biofrost. Yeah, we um, can talk about TSM. We can talk about TSM. Let's go. 2 0. 2 0. You know, bounce back. Maybe I was a little too doom and gloom. Maybe I was a little too, too <laughs> doom and gloom. Um, yo, but that 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 Immortals loss just looked really bad. I'm not going to lie. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, man. I, I had, that I, shit was like I was 60 minutes. Was sus. <laughs> I was fair to say they were sus. Um, but yeah, Biofrost, I'm glad. It, it's kind of like to me that that whole trade kind of thing was like. Yo, TSM was like, oh, yo, Bio, we want you to go uh, grow up a little bit. Here, let's give you the CLG. Here you go. And then, and then CLG's <laughs> like, all right, Bio, come on. We, we're we're going to grow you up. Yeah, top three. Woo. And then he's like, all right, later, guys. I'm going back to TSM. Like, Infiltration I gotta go get my, complete. Got to go get my paycheck. <laughs> yeah, he killed CLG from the inside. <laughs> That's what they're all for. But TSM, Biofrost, um, looking pretty good, honestly. His Tom Kench in the first week was fucking PogChamp. And this week he looked fucking great. Like the bot lane looked clean. There wasn't yeah. really anything both bad happening. Both games on Recon. Yeah, Pog. both games on Recon. So that was good. Um, the only problem for TSM this week, I think, was the EG game um, versus yeah, you know, well the EG game, right? So Dardoch mm-hmm. gets gets the Gragas, right? So he already counters Sven's Karen's Kindred, but he plays really poorly. In the first, I'd say, 20 minutes of the match. The first 25 minutes of the match. And and it's what's causing TSM to, like, lose. So even though Broken Blade is fucking popping off on set. And, like, trying to hard carry. And, like, his lanes are doing pretty good. He, he is just playing really... Darduk was playing just really bad. Um, but then, you know, he pulls it together. They end up winning the game. But th- it's kind of worrying. Because after the first week, his early game was what was good. But then this week, his early game was worse. That's... I don't know. Uh, probably just a game to game sort of thing. Yeah. So hopefully Unlikely. TSM will be good. <laughs> uh, this week, th- this week was, would you say this week was easier? They uh, EG and COG, so. EG, COG, and then last week they had IMT and. TL. TL. Uh, this week's definitely easier because TL, like, despite not having their full roster, like, it's still Team Liquid. Yeah. Um, but I think TSM this week definitely found like what they wanted to do because I they quickly identified that their mid and late game were just fucking dog shit. So then they were like, "All right, guys, this week's practice, we're gonna emphasize mid and late game," which is what they've been saying in like interviews and stuff. Um, so it's good that they you know just picked the Zaya Rakan to help with their mid and late game because that's yeah. just a pretty good combo uh, in and of itself. Uh, mm-hmm. And then yeah, I mean like. Their mid and late games didn't look as bad as last week's. So <laughs> when they were in a position to do something, they actually did do it. Uh, but the uh, CLG game, they had Kiana uh, on Dardoch, which was very interesting because that's not a champion you see ever. And like, uh, I think the casters pointed it out. Like, Kiana's very. Yeah, that too. Kiana's a very slow clearer. So, like, when Olaf was on, like, third camp level three Kiana was still clearing the second camp so oh yeah when Wiggly um, was going for his like fifth camp I think Dardak had only done three so yeah so like definitely like on the lower tempo of a jungler but like it's just that assassination potential I guess that they wanted so I mean he had some good ultis but he didn't really play that well I mean yeah it's kind of hard to play Kiana in competitive I would say yeah because everyone just you know playing safe (laughs) but what I like seeing about the Kiana game was that Bjergsen was playing Syndra. Syndra obviously un, un, uh, unbanned again. Mm-hmm. So it's available. So like, what I really like seeing was that they both, like, you know, Bjergsen shoved in mid lane and then they both invaded the jungle together. Even though it didn't work out, it was still good to see that, like, they, they you know, they, they played really well that early game together right there. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously their mid game was, was better too. Which is why I mean it was CLG though, so CLG's looking really bad. Um, but at least it looks better. Next week they have a real test, Dignitas. Yes. <laughs> so TSM have to face Dig and Golden Guardians. 
So hopefully they could pick up at least one win. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, if they go two out, then you know it's, it's looking good. Yeah. It's looking good. It is what it is. But it is I guess we can talk is. about dig. Yeah, that's why I would kind of want to move because TL TSM versus dig is interesting because of the matchups where Broken Blade is playing really good and Hootie has been playing good. And then Froggen versus Bjerg. Maybe Bjergsen's finally not going to be sick this week. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that'll be interesting to see uh, who's better. And Greg obviously going against TSM again. You know, like across the board, it looks like TSM has the better players and they should win. But obviously, Dignitas has been looking so good. Like the better team. Yeah. And, and maybe it, it's kind of... It's kind of hard to say because in the TL game, maybe they should have lost that. Like, can this is like me being devil's advocate is that Dig maybe yeah. should have lost the TL game because TL game, TL was playing really really well. They were but they were playing a different style. They were playing one three one, and Double F was playing Senna and Johnson was playing Aphelios. So maybe like you know, if the roles were reversed, right? Maybe if if Dig had Senna and Double F had Aphelios, or maybe they played Zyra Khan something like this what they won mm-hmm. with the next day. Like, th- then Dignitas doesn't look as good. Maybe the game, th- maybe they end up losing that game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because it was really close. Like, they, yeah, TL got bought in Hib, and, but the they Jensen won off of like was that. Actually insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Jensen split was insane. But, and the fight around mid lane, no, around top lane where they get this really good engage and freaking Johnson lands a three man, grab a Tamo, and they get fucking Jarvan Oriana comboed. Like, how often yeah. does that happen and you just lose a game, right? Yeah, I, Jensen pretty much died instantly. So yeah, he got <laughs> he do popped. Anything. He got popped, and so like that's my thing is that like, and they they beat TL right off of that one last team fight at the end, but mm-hmm. then the fly quest game, Jesus, did they get like shown? Yeah, up. so like this is the first time we've seen Dig in like a really bad disadvantage in the early game, and like. It was like, hey right, guys, how are they gonna recover? They just didn't. <laughs> yeah. Like, they just couldn't at all because I guess Power of Evil on Rumble is just smurfing or something. Uh, but yeah, it it just seemed like Dig from behind against FlyQuest was just not looking good. Yeah. So that was but rough to see. That TL game was definitely very interesting because it was were, close, but it was yeah. a high level game though, right? Yeah, I mean. Dig had all of the dragons, which is why they were still in the game relatively. Uh, but they had like no like map pressure. Like they were getting outsplit by the rise everywhere. Yeah. So and there's not really and they much were just you can losing in and right? stuff like that. I mean, like, yeah, the, like they did try to do something with um, uh, oh, Avram Avram going Avram. for that play, but uh, yeah, yeah, you know, obviously that didn't work. So at least they tried that, and then that play with uh, Jensen just dying instantly happened. So. Yeah. They had Gangplank, right? Dignitas had Gangplank? That yeah, game. so GP. So, yeah, <laughs> GP versus Rise also sucks. Rise will shit on that GP 100% of the time. Which is what happened, because yeah. Huni did die solo. Yeah, so, like, that, uh, obviously, like, but to me, I feel like if, if TL had, like, you know, l- like, a little bit more ballsy, if they, like, just kept Jensen, like, split pushing, like, the whole game, Maybe then they like fucking are like back to in the fucking game at that point, right? Um, yeah, because they have Rise Ulti to do that. If, exactly, but maybe, they, maybe they're not to confident it. enough in the one. Like they have to improve their one through one if they want to play internationally well. So mm-hmm. you know, I think that's kind of what they want to move towards. But obviously, it's between like, all right, we if we practice one through one on the stage and we lose, it looks bad. But then again, if we just play fucking standard, like we'll win every game. But are we really gonna improve? Yeah. Like, what we saw in, like, the next TL game where they played FlyQuest and they literally dismantled the fuck out of FlyQuest. Mm-hmm. Because they just gave Double F Aphelios and just let him run everyone down. <laughs> yeah. And, like, and, and the, these are the last two teams we have to po- talk about, right? TL and FlyQuest? Uh, let me see. I think, don't think we're missing anybody. Uh, yeah, I guess we talked about EG already. Uh, yeah, TL FlyQuest. Yeah, so yeah. So obviously TL and Five Quest played a game against each other. Mm-hmm. And TL just fucking walked all over them. Like they played like double lift had Aphelios. Viper was missing every skill shot. 
Uh, <laughs> he was playing. So Viper was playing Mordekaiser, and then he ults double lift, and double lift's just like, hey, man, you're fucking dead, kid. Like, you're, yeah. I'm not in here with you. You're in here with me. True. And he's just like, yeah, <laughs> fuck. So, yeah, th- th- that game was such a stomp. Like, it was so fast. Like, and basically, double lift in the in the interview after it's just like, yeah, fuck Senna, dog champ. Why would I want to play for my team? I could play Aphelios and carry. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know why they weren't doing that before. Like, like I was saying earlier, like prioritizing Senna over Aphelios is just trolling, in my opinion. Yeah. Because uh, I just think Aphelios is so much better. Maybe they want to so play the better. EU style, right? They want to they want to play the split pusher and Senna one v like Senna, So Senna she has ulti. Jensen goes side lane with Rise and then. You know, he can never lose a 1v1 because you have Senna ulti, right? But Doublelift mm-hmm. obviously doesn't play that style. Like, maybe they just don't want to play that style. But, like, that's yeah. the style that they play in EU. So they see it in EU and they're like, that's good. We should play like that. But mm-hmm. it just doesn't work for them. Maybe when Broxa gets there, it'll work for them. But Yeah, maybe. Because Broxa, I mean, he was on one of the yeah, best 1-3-1 one, teams. He was on Fnatic, so. He was on Fnatic. <laughs> he was on one of the best 1-3-1 one, one teams in the fucking world. Uh... And they only lost to another team that was better than at, them at one thirty one that year in twenty eighteen. They only lost to IG because they were better at one thirty one than them. Well, they had better laners. But besides the point, like to, <laughs> you know, he played on one of the best one thirty one teams in the world. I think once Broxa gets there and he's like, guys, this is how you fucking one thirty one. Then TL looks like a fucking good team, like way better. Yeah. Also during the uh, FlyQuest game, I don't know what the fuck was going on there, but so they get Aphelios Brom right. Yeah. That shit's disgusting. Like, 100%. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Gross, all Aphelios gross, gross. wants to do is team fight. And when, and when you pair him with Braum, like, that is just gross. And then their counter for the bot lane is Senna Rakan. That bot lane has zero Senna synergy. Rakan, what dude. the hell? What are they doing? So, I have no idea why Ignar thought Rakan would have been good there. Obviously, you know, you got to have the engage and stuff like that. But, like, you have to, like, get a decent bot lane where it looks like you're not, like, running it down. Like, yeah. maybe Leona might have been better because, like, Rakan is obviously, like, safer and, like, you can get out of engages and stuff like that. But I think maybe the Leona just to, like, get in there and just, you know, just do as much as she can instead of, like, Rakan uh, might have been a little bit, uh, just a little better. But then again, you know, FlyQuest, with the way that, that they played that game out, did not look so hot either, so. Yeah, I mean, my confusion with their draft was that they themselves banned Tom Kench, right? So, like, mm-hmm. why do you even care if it's Aphelios, Tom Kench? Like, because yeah, Senna, Brom, like Senna <laughs> Brom works. Affili- like, why ban out something? Because then you have to draft something, like, actually that does. You'd have to draft either Leona, Nautilus, or Thresh, right? Because those are the other picks that are in the meta. Mm-hmm. Unless you're ballsy and you fucking draft, like, Lulu or Nami or something, right? But neither of those work well with Senna either. Yeah. So, that's, like, the weird thing is that. That's where, like, the prio on Senna comes suspect um in yeah because like, around think, the world right i think if they picked mf instead yeah. of senna like that probably would have been a lot better for the comp as a whole yeah i mean you still get like you'd have to pick mf and braum together so that's like the weird thing but like at least if you pair mf with rakan or maybe what like another thing is why don't you pick zaya rakan like that's you know that's, yeah just so FlyQuest get out drafted this game right but then they just get shit on in general, so like that's. <laughs> but then fly quest chat on dig so. <laughs> yeah, and then I don't like, know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I think I think TL once they get Broxa, and we're gonna find out. So today's this Wednesday, week. we're gonna find out tomorrow whether the Broxa's visa is approved or denied. And once we find that out, it'll be. I mean, apparently, if his visa gets denied, it'll be months before they get any news on whether it gets approved again. So expect that if Brox's visa gets denied, expect him not to play in the spring. Honestly, like at yeah. least the regular. Unless say, uh, unless a EU team or you know something happens. No, there's no way they give up the Brox a contract. He's on. Who he's knows? on a two year, isn't he? I'm not sure. Yeah, we'd have to check the database for that. But still, um, Shurnfire on this team for the whole split. I mean, congrats to Shurnfire. Right? But... <laughs> but is Team Liquid going to be top tier? No. I mean, I think they look worse than Cloud9 right now. And it's really debatable whether they're better than Cloud9 with Broxa. Yeah. So, if uh, if that visa does get declined, it's going to be Yikes. rough for Teal. Yeah. yeah. But they're fi- going to have to 
obviously like spring spring doesn't mean shit so like yeah. hopefully this summer they can find like a pretty decent jungler you know Replace. no offense to sure fire but you know yeah, he's learning he's, he's developing of you course know? of course of course but so i mean he's played four he's played they three need games something. of jarvin one they game need, of need something good now <laughs> yeah they need something good right now uh <laughs> Um, but yeah, so uh, at least on the TL side of things, hopefully they get Brox's visa approved tomorrow. We're going to find out. Um, by the time you listen to this, you'll probably have already known. Uh, and so the last team, FlyQuest, obviously they shit on Dig, but they lost the TL. That kind of puts the power rankings in an iffy situation where, you know, Dig and FlyQuest are both tied for three and one with FlyQuest with the head to head. Uh, and and that's like a weird top three to be talking about, right? Cloud nine, fly dig, quest, fly. dig, C nine. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Not people already put C nine in the top three before the season started, but a lot of people were expecting TL and TSM to also be up there. But early season blunders, you know, it's only been two weeks. We still got a long season ahead of us, so yeah. I think by the end of it, we'll see TSM uh, back in form and hopefully hundred thieves as well, because those are. The teams I'm rooting for, along with Dig. So yeah, and but we're gonna see the top three clash this week, though. Yeah, that is definitely gonna be very that's fun. exciting because it's very gonna be Cloud Nine versus Fly on Saturday, and then Cloud Nine mm-hmm. versus Dig on Sunday. Do you want to do a uh, quick predictions? Quick predictions, yeah. Let's go quick. Okay, so EG versus CLG. All right, I know. If you had to put money on it, <laughs> which of the bottom teams this are gonna win, bro? Troll, but I think CLG will win. Tell me I, why. Like, I, I think that, you know, they've had, CLG's had a rough schedule, I think. And I think that now that their schedule has, like, kind of lightened might, up a bit. Might be easier. Hopefully, you know, Wiggly won't look like he's running it down. <laughs> you know, maybe Smoothie and Stixie can, like, start, like, go at least go even. I think Crown Yo, is better than Jazuki. Actually, so I think- the schedule's fucked for CLG. So they play the first game on Saturday, right? Yeah. Their next game is the last game on Monday. That sucks. <laughs> that is definitely like so bad. But if I had to put money on it between these two teams for me personally, uh definitely I'm gonna go with E. G. just because like they show some sign of life when it comes to CLG outside of the first week. Like it just seems like CLG in week two was just like a dead horse just playing the game at least within week one they were were like going for plays and like going for engages yeah. and stuff like that like yeah. week two clg just look like they they aren't doing much but i think uh <laughs> eg has the better players with more experience and i think they'll be able to clutch out this win I, i'm uh, just hoping man like i, I got the faith <laughs> i got faith CLG oh okay bro okay pull it together you know two two a week you know against the bottom teams maybe maybe they start making a comeback <laughs> so, um yeah that's uh next up is 100 thieves versus tl uh TL. It's for me dude probably another week of improving with shern fire um learning from their draft mistakes against dig i think this and the, the fact is that 100 thieves is early game does not look good and if tl mm-hmm. gets a lead they're probably not letting go all right i have I have faith. Hundred thieves. Let's get it. Run it up. (laughs) Run it up. Run it up. Uh, Run it up. What is this? Uh, Fucking faith. Bullshit. (laughs) Uh, TSM versus Dig. That's the next game. Uh, So these two teams are definitely very interesting, like we were talking about earlier. Yeah, tough one. Uh, one. We we kind of previewed a little bit how this would go. Um, But now it's time to put our money where our mouth is. (laughs) If you Uh, want to put money. Uh, Uh, I'm going Dig. You're going to say dig? I'm going to say dig. Look, man, I think TSM is just getting oh better and better God. each Fanboy. week. Fanboy. Of course, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> I honestly really like this roster just because they actually had the balls to bring in Dardock, and I think Dardock's just a really good jungler. I like it. Um, I like him. I like the roster too, but just dig just looks good, right? They do, but in that in that fly quest match, I don't oh, know, man. If they it don't was get Echo, a lead, man. It's it kind was, of yo, over. Yo, Birx is not gonna play Rumble, man. Birx is not gonna play Rumble. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, C9 fly quest. Uh, it's currently top two teams in these standings. I gotta go Cloud Nine. They're just too good yeah. right now. I think, I think C9 is just too good as yeah. well. Like they, they just, look, like so obviously, solid. like fly quest dismantled Dig, but I think. When it comes to like a best of three or like best of five series, I think that 
C9 is going to take it. But in this best one, I think C9's got it in the bag already. I think the I think the difference between Niski and, and Power of Evil is probably just going to be a little too high because Power of Evil plays for himself a lot of the time. He plays his own style, as yeah, a lot of people and, say. And Niski will always play for his jungler. So Blabber is going to get, you know, like... I think the 2v2 mid is where Cloud9 will really break open the game. And it's obviously where they break open the game a lot of the time. Um, just because of how good Niski works with his junglers. So, you know, that's... At least for me, it's going to be Cloud9, right? So. Yeah. Uh, then we got the Academy game. 100 Thieves Academy versus C9 Academy. Uh, I'm going to say 100 Thieves Academy. I'm going to go with you on that one. Prismal looks good. Yeah, Prismal is super good. And, like, uh, Kelsey's just a smurf, smurf, smurf on the coach. Smurf on the honestly. draft. Smurf on the draft. <laughs> and, well, uh, you know, c nine still, like, developing their talent. But when it comes to this best one, I think I got to say 100 Thieves. Yeah, and and, Bre- and Breezy. Uh, we, we I don't think we touched on him during when we were talking about Academy. But Breezy looked really good. So Yeah, he's uh, definitely showing that he has it. He has what it takes to compete with an academy as of right now. So yeah, so good, that's good to good. see. Uh, uh, on to next Sunday. day, yep, we got IMT versus 100 Thieves. I'm going to say 100 Thieves because IMT still look all over the place. Like they don't have any like real sense of like cohesion, I would say. So I'm just going to say 100 Thieves. Yeah, and Ika, and, and here's the battle between the import mid laners, Ika and Ryoma. And honestly, Ryoma has impressed me more than Ika has. Um, mm-hmm. And impress is kind of... I'm kind of using that, like, lightly. <laughs> uh, Ryoma's looked better. Not much better, but he's, he's, he's looked better than Ika. I- Ika just looks like he's running it down. So, that's, you know, it's sus. Probably, like, bottom... Might be, like, the bottom mid laners in the league, you know, playing against each other. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately so 100 thieves for me too uh, next game golden guardians versus tsm i don't think golden guardians keith can improve enough to do anything <laughs> this you guys said only keith <laughs> yeah dude closer looks so fucking good golden glue doesn't look bad Hauntzer looked shit on orn and soraka but why the fuck is Hauntzer on orn and soraka and so he's a he's a carry player. He's a carry player. He got kicked mm-hmm. off of TSM because he didn't want to not play carries. You know, tell me now he's on Golden Guardians. He's gonna play carries. Fuck is that? What the hell? <laughs> no way. No way. So I like I I just wish freaking and like FBI doesn't look that bad. He looks stand like he didn't look that bad when he was in LCS last year either. I think it's just Keith like legit running it down, making it impossible. And lane is support difference. So if Keith can't lane either, fuck is going on. <laughs> yeah, true. Go I'm get just this guy. A, yeah. Go get this guy treats, man. Go get sneaky and treats, and maybe you got a roster. Maybe I don't even know if sneaky wants to play on this team, bro. Exactly. That's what I'm if he didn't, saying. If he didn't even want to play on Dig, yeah, you know. Ooh, so, exactly. But so. yeah, definitely TSM, like definitely you said, TSM. like Golden Guardians. Uh, as a team, I think they're still trying to find what they're good at and they're just trying everything and just throwing it at the wall and nothing's working or some's working but not not nothing yeah. like their early really game was good solid. but they can't convert their mid game is yeah. shit it's like mm-hmm. they're just like a worse version than TSM basically <laughs> basically <laughs> uh, which is funny that they're going against TSM um but yeah maybe oh, maybe dig. they can win if TSM gets tilted off the fucking earth if they play dig Right, <laughs> you know, maybe yeah, TSM possibly. gets tilted, and then the Golden Guardians comes in. Like, all right, guys, let's get this fucking W. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the then next we got Dig C nine, Dig C nine, yeah. So, um, I C nine's looking clean. I have clean. to get to C nine, yeah. I have C9's to get to C nine. But I'm I gonna say I'd be Dig because why not? <laughs> You're gonna say Dig? What well, you're trolling? Look, bro, I believe. I believe, believe? Will, bro. John, bro, you didn't believe the it. versus TSM. Why you believe the versus Cloud Nine? Look, I have my favorites. <laughs> I have my biases. <laughs> <It's got> blatant <laughs> I believe, favoritism. Look, 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 I believe that Dig can somehow clutch a win like they did with TL, bro, oh. against C9. <laughs> unless unless c9 actually is ramming Yo, in and, and c9 like it's is over smurfing. c9 is smurfing. 
But who uh, knows? Who knows? Who knows? See, I yeah, could get complacent. Know. Who knows? True, you know? true, true, true. Niski said, as long as they don't get cocky, they'll they'll win the split. So you know, maybe the cockiness is already coming. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Cloud Nine is so good. I mean, we we touched on them a lot this episode because they're they just been impressing a lot. Mm-hmm. And so that's I, I that's my thing. Like Cloud, like Niski and Blabber just look so good that. It makes it hard for me to say certain combos will beat them, right? So, like, when I think about Dig and I think Greg and Froggen, I'm like, well, Froggen could be better individually than Niski, but when you put junglers in there, I, you know, Blabber's <laughs> definitely better. Blabber's just going to yeah. go aggressive and just invade. <laughs> yeah, so so that's my thing for Cloud9. Like, uh, uh, and there's not a lot of, like, super great mid-jungle duos. Like, you, you got Dardock and Bjerg, and then you have, like, Jensen and, and Broxa, but they're not, he, like, he's not here. So, mm-hmm. like, it's hard to see, like, where it's, where Cloud, for me at least, it's hard to see where Cloud Nine's going to falter until, like, at least week four. Because that's when they play TSM. Maybe then TSM, like, looks good enough to take a win, right? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. That's what I'm rooting for. That's what you're rooting <laughs> for. And I wouldn't mind a TSM. One either. I, I you know, I, I'm a Bjergsen fan, so and a Biofrost fan and a Dardock fan, so True. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. got FlyQuest E G next. Uh, uh so after FlyQuest dismantled Dig. Uh I think on good days FlyQuest are like definitely like top four. Maybe on, like, on good drafts too. Yeah, good drafts too, which is also equivalent to a good day <laughs> uh but even even on a bad day i i still have to give it a fly <laughs> yeah yeah because eg just from these two weeks two weeks alone like it looks like they're just like there are just weird draft mistakes and then there's just like some things in game that they're just doing and i'm just like why did that happen how did you guys get caught here why are you guys in their jungle this and that so um Hopefully they'll be able to clean up their gameplay and hopefully Irene will get a brain and not pick. Not, and yeah, not drafts like that. Or maybe it's when Scran <laughs> stops like running it down. Like, no, like maybe that should, too. Maybe, yeah, maybe. yeah. Like, you, you, like we're, we're not talking about it, but since Scran was really running it down in some of those games, man, like <laughs> didn't look good. Uh, uh, so the last Academy game on Sunday, what is it? Tell me. TSM and Dig. Ooh. So Dignitas, the LCS team, Kappa XD, yeah, with Demonte Acadian versus uh, the TSM Academy, which has Evolved and all those players. Um, I mean, you know, I think this is where Dig's going to falter. I'm actually going to put my money on TSM Academy. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is where it's interesting for me because Evolved looks good, right? Mm-hmm. So, and I'm always interested in Evolve because I've played against him in solo queue and he's a cat one trick. Um, but now he's playing, you know, competitively. And I want to see kind of where he stacks up to to Demonte, right? And, you know, Spica has LCS experience too. I mean, he played the last week of LCS and then he played in the playoffs and he played in the gauntlet. Um, you know, even though he actually didn't win a series... I think he lost all those series. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, but, you know, the, at least he has experience, right? So maybe Spica and, and Evolved can, you know, show up and, and show the Swole Bros fucking Ac- Acadia and Demonte was good. Um, but, you know, kind of risky for me. I still I still have to go with Dig. I honestly think they might just go undefeated. Um, but, you know, with the drafts that they have, like uh, th- that Dig Academy does, it's like, we're better, we know it, and we'll show you. So I feel like yeah. if they if they started drafting something more standard, like with engage and like these kind of like easier comps to execute on, they could just go eighteen zero easy, right? But they're they're like styling, yeah. you know? They're they're, mm-hmm. they're showing off some. They're shit. having fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they know. They know. Um, All right, so we get to Monday with uh, Monday Night League. So we got the big block of academy games. So CLGA versus IMTA. Uh, CLGA is just, uh, yikes, don't know yikes, what they're yikes, doing. Yikes. IMTA, uh, yeah, insanity is popping IMTA. off. Uh, insanity is popping insanity's off. Insanity is popping so, off. So I'm Pilot glad playing pretty good. Yep. Gates pretty good. Yeah. Like he's playing well. So, so and CLGA they also have can, Apollo, right? So yeah. Gate, so I mean, Apollo. CLGA <laughs> is just going to get washed. IMT is, you know, going to get out there. You know, Apollo played Syndra 
and he smurfed on. Uh, That's crazy, bro. Cloud Nine, yeah. <laughs> Cloud Nine Academy. He smurfed the Cloud Nine Academy with Syndra. Well, we didn't talk. We didn't touch on it, but yeah, he smurfed on them, so it was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I gotta go. Gotta go. Int there. Uh, FlyQuest versus EG. Uh, Ooh. You know, FlyQuest. Um, as long they went as too their up. coach has a brain. <laughs> they went too old this week, so. EG did right. Yeah, EG EG went too old this week because yeah. uh, they got Onda and Five Fire, and well, Five yeah. Fire didn't look great, but still, Onda looked really good, and that's I think that's mm-hmm. the big thing. Um, when you have a good jungler, I think it makes it a lot easier to play the game. So I, I think I'll still stick to EG on this one. Honestly, don't think I don't think Flyk was. I mean, it's close, but I I, I generally think that EG is really good. Yeah, as long as you know. Honda and uh, definitely are playing on form. I don't see them losing at all because EG is just smurfing. <laughs> yeah. Then we got TLA and GGA. Uh, man, watch it. So TLA. Bottom, bottom tier matchup, man. Come on. TLA is actually really bad. And GGA is slightly better, but I don't know, man. I'm. <laughs> I'm just gonna say go to Guardians because yeah, man, this is TLA is just oh so God. bad actually. Yeah, it's actually like, crazy. Yeah, so I mean maybe they pull it together, maybe. but definitely don't think they will. That's just the thing. don't think they will. <laughs> yeah. Then the contrast we got the LCS teams TL and GGS. Uh so TL is just gonna win it, like without yeah. a doubt. Yeah, like. They're just gonna, they're they've been improving like the the improvement from week one to week two in Sharon Fire was really good to see right and then mm-hmm. Jensen obviously played way better in week two than he did in week one even though they lost the the dig dig game he still looked way better so I don't think it's gonna be close I think Jensen's probably gonna smash hopefully they'll draft like Aphelios or Misfortune something like this and win. Um, for TL, I mean, right? And Jensen, you know, they, they can try one through one with Aphelios, and I think they win a game. Like, the, there's no need to mm-hmm. have to draft the Seno, right? So, I think that's fine. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I just, TL for me. I just think Keith is still bad, yeah, and I Keith don't know how so how we can improve so much without like just getting caught oh, like every God, time. Like man, he's just doing like these weird and random just like plays. It's, dude, just... it's the bur- it's the best support in the league versus the worst support in the league. Yeah, so hopefully uh, Core JJ can uh, take advantage. Take of that. a smash. Let me see some Zyra Khan. Let me see Golden Guardians bot lane go like oh six. That would be. Or don't you mean Keith just 06 and FBI? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keith 06 FBI showing like oh like you know zero zero zero. No more zero. flame. No more flame. No more but... flame. <laughs> uh, uh, and then last COG game. IMT. Jesus, yes, we have to watch it, man. We yeah. watched COG last so week on Monday that's Night the League. Last game. So bottom teams once again. Who you They're got? They're both gonna be O one. No, actually, COG will win their game. Nah, COG is gonna win. CLG against gonna IMT. They're gonna they're gonna have a two zero week. You know I what? Believe. I'm gonna say CLG too. Yes, yeah, the fate. Ika Ika is actually just gonna get smurfed on or smurfed, something. Smurfed on. Something bad's gonna happen. World, to Ika. world champion <laughs> crown's gonna smurf on fucking EU LCS. Not even EU LCS. Fucking EU regional league player. It's gonna be lit to watch. <laughs> crown's gonna have a hundred CS lead at ten minutes. Pog. Hopefully. He's not gonna Ike's not gonna get a single CS. He's gonna be AFK and Fountain. That would be really bad. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh that'll do for predictions, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh hope next week we'll obviously be back talking about some awesome things that happened this week. Uh anything to say before we leave T V Sonic? I think we're good. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so we will see you guys next week with another episode. Later.